If I do this and I just make a... Now we always think of Kyusho as in striking certain targets. Okay? We don't always have to strike. I mean, these are very sensitive targets. Vascular tissue and nerve tissue, very, very sensitive. Okay? If I had turned his head some way, look at the exposure I've got in that, that area right there. Okay? You can do what's called the compression. Okay? And all you have to do is stick a sharp little object in there. I could use this, or I could use an elbow strike right in there, or an elbow pressure. And what you do is you'll affect that better than in a standing position. The reason is, I mean, your face is not going anywhere. When you're standing, there's a little give and play with it, okay, so they can escape. Okay, now I'm going to use something called the blood pool game. And I'll get into that, with the, what that's really about a little bit later. But I'm going to use that set of knuckles right in there, okay. Now where I'm going, I'm putting that right into a pool of blood because there's two, two um, vascular tissues right in there. If I do this and I just make a... Now, I didn't push hard because, again, that's, that's um, stopping the blood flow into the brain. But let me explain. It also rushes a little blood into the brain, too, because I'm pushing it up toward there. Okay? So if I really pushed hard, there might be a chance of rupturing some blood vessels going in there. So that could be a very dangerous technique. Now, I shouldn't have done this to you because I wanted you to explain what you uh, told me about your marine training. Okay? okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He came up to me right during the, the as we were practicing, and he said something really cool. I wanted to, and you can uh, use me as the okay. Um, when Mr. Pitaj was explaining about the hollow pocket in 17, here, one of the basic things we learned in the Marine Corps is to shave the shave its jaw. I don't know what, that's what we used to call it. Bring it down here, tilt the head, take the knife, stick it here, and go straight into the brain, twist it two times, and only exhale. Just this call. I don't know that for personal experience, but uh, that's what we were taught. But um. So you're coming in, you come in, break it down, stick it right there, twist a couple times, and it falls. Oh. So like Mr. Pitani was talking about, the big issue is usually pokey things. This is a pokey thing. You're going, right, <laughs> you're going right into the brain stem to shut it down. You can live without the uh, uh, cerebrum, what we often call the brain. You can live without that, but uh, you can have what's called a decerebrate animal that they use in research, but you can't. Uh, disconnect the brainstem, and what you did was just shove it in the brainstem. That's why when the uh, marksmen aim the T there, they're looking to put it right into the brainstem because that shuts it down. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is um, our modern military is using the same techniques as the old military from the Mubishi. And that's one of the reasons I was saying earlier, it was probably used with swords, spears, knives, weapons. Okay, and that just proves that the, the tradition is still alive. I mean, it's still being taught today because it's a viable technique. So we, that that really breaks down what the bubishi. I believe the bubishi is all about is going right into these very vulnerable targets and and ending it. And that's why they call it dim mark with a death touch. It's not really a touch. It's a, a knife touch. Thanks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>